Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to test yet another Chinese X99 motherboard. And in this case I have this Chiyida X99 H9S. What's so interesting about this motherboard is that it is the first ever Chinese X99 motherboard with official TPM 2.0 support. The motherboard has a 14-pin TPM 2.0 header that is supposed to work with MSI TPM modules. Thanks to a generous subscriber called Adam, I have got two of these motherboards and two modules to test. The first set I bought myself, but unfortunately my TPM module died or refused to work after a single reboot. That could have been a motherboard's fault or the module's fault, and without having another pair it would not be possible to figure out who is at fault here. Now let's do the usual stuff. I flip the camera, walk you through this motherboard, then I go through the test results and then I tell you my honest opinion about this motherboard. So let's quickly go through the technical specification of Chiyida X99 H9S. Unsurprisingly the socket here is LJ2011 version 3, then we have 4 DDR4 memory slots for quad channel memory support, Additionally, we have two M.2 slots, PCI Express X16, PCI Express X1. And the chipset on this motherboard is either server C612 or desktop version of the same chipset X99. The PCI Express X16 slot is connected to the CPU and it is PCI Express 3.0 X16. Both of the M.2 slots are PCI Express 3.0 X4, both of them are connected to the CPU. But the first one can also be used to install SATA M.2 SSDs. For that you will have to flip these four tiny jumpers to the other side and then SATA SSDs work in this slot. Flipping these jumpers will disable one of these SATA 3.0 ports, but you still have such a possibility. So in total we have four SATA 3.0 ports, you have either four of these or three of these and one M.2. On this side we also have 8-pin CPU power connector, 24-pin motherboard power connector, here we have front button and LEDs, clear CMOS jumper, then we have USB 2 header, USB 3 header, COM header, TPM header, 3-pin fan header and front audio header. In addition to this 14-pin TPM header, we also have a JLPC header in form of this tiny connector over here. I have no idea how to test it and I don't know if it works, but it is here. Next to the LPC header we have a tiny speaker, which is not that annoying and not that loud as it typically happens on the Chinese motherboards. Additionally, I can mention that this PCI Express X1 is connected to the chipset and it is PCI Express 2.0 X1. The rear RU of X99 H9S motherboard is slightly better than what you would see on a typical X99 motherboard from AliExpress. Because the X99 or C612 chipset supports more USB 3 ports, we get 4 USB 3 ports, 4 USB 2 ports, PS2 ports, simple Ethernet and simple audio exits. The VRM on this motherboard has active cooling in form of this tiny fan and the tiny fan under my testing behaved pretty well but it's just a matter of time until this fan wears out and starts to make different weird noises. The fan is connected with a simple 2-pin header through 5 volt. The voltage is constant so the fan rotates at constant speed and there is absolutely no way to control or monitor it. Next to this tiny 2-pin header you also get a 4-pin PWM header for your CPU fan and the smartphone function works for this header only. Now let's move to the test results. I have tested everything I could possibly test on this motherboard and some of the features were tested twice on both of the motherboard samples I have. So USB 3, USB 2 and SATA 3 ports, all of them are working just as they should. Smart fan, unfortunately just like with any other Chinese motherboard, works for the 4-pin PWM header for the CPU fan and only with 4-pin fans. The 2-pin fan header for the VRM fan supplies static 5 volts like I have already said. PCI Express X16 is PCI Express 3.0 X16 and PCI Express buffication is supported. PCI Express X1 works as PCI Express 2.0 uh, X1 connected to the chipset and unlike many other Chinese motherboards with the Chiyida X99 H9S I can use my PCI Express X1 GT710 graphics card. 
With many other tested Chinese motherboards, the power supplied to the PCIe Express X1 slot is not enough to power up the GT710. Both of the M.2 slots are also working just as they should, and I do not have any complaints regarding the audio quality or the LAN quality. TPM 2.0, here we have a little bit of details. So first of all, the same header is shared between MSI and other sorts of TPM modules. I need to warn you that if you use ASUS or Gigabyte TPM module that uses exactly the same connector, you will get a short in your motherboard and the motherboard will either not boot or may even kill itself. The MSI 14-pin TPM 2.0 modules are supposed to work here, I have tested two of them, one died immediately after reboot, but the other one that I have received from my subscriber, and the link of course will be in the video description, works just fine. I have tested the second module with both of the motherboards, I did a couple of restarts and did not get any issues. The TPM module still works and it is still detected by both of the motherboards. With the TPM module installed, the secure boot enabled and CSM disabled, the Chiida X99H9S is fully compatible with the Windows 11. At least as of right now Windows does not complain about it and all the updates are available. Nevertheless, we also have some bitterness. The TPM header is way too close to the PCIe Express X1 slot and depending on what you want to install in the X1 slot, it may or may not be possible to use both of them at the same time. In my case, with the NVIDIA GT710, I could install both of them and it would fit just fine. The BIOS on the motherboard is a standard Winbond W25Q128VV and it can be read or written with FPT. Of course, you can use Mi899, my application, to do that as well. In terms of features, Chiida X99H9S is a typical budget-oriented Chinese motherboard. Here, sleep mode doesn't work, but much to my surprise, ECC mode does work. The motherboard also has a RAM timing says right in the BIOS. I have tested ECC and non-ECC memory, I have also tested 128GB of memory with 432GB sticks, and it works just fine. CPU overclocking is not available and Intel XTU is not working either. Resizable bar though works and it is available in the BIOS options. Clear CMOS and restore on power loss functions are also present and they work. Headless boot with this motherboard is also working. The motherboard would produce a few annoying beeps if you try to boot without a graphics card, but then it proceeds and boots the system, which is very nice. Regarding the VRAM, I can say that it is pretty basic. We have the standard four-phase controller where only three phases are utilized. Each phase has a doubler, so in total we have six phases. About the MOSFETs, I could not find definite information on the internet, so I just add the naming on the screen. The thermal performance was not bad, I assume that the fan in the heatsink is doing its job. Testing with EFI 2697v3 and Turbo Boost unlocked, after 30 minutes of ADA64 stress test, the VRAM and the zone around it did not heat up to more than 55 degrees Celsius. At the same time, I did not use a flower like a CPU cooler, so the VRM zone did not receive any extra airflow, except of that we get from the VRM fan. The power consumption from the wall during this stress test was about 240 watts, if you're interested in that. Finally, I need to add that the motherboard temperature readings are way too low and the power consumption sensor is wrong. For the CPUs, I have tested i7-5820K, EFI-1650V4 and EFI-2697V3. 5820K is a unique CPU because it has only 28 PCIe Express lanes, unlike the Xeons, which have 40 lanes. Very often, Chinese are routing PCIe Express lanes incorrectly, and with the limited i7, the PCIe Express X16 slot either doesn't work or works as X8. In case of Chiida X99H9S, I am pleased to inform you that everything works just like as it should, even if you install limited i7-5820K. The PCIe Express X16 slot still works as X16, and both of the M.2 slots are still working as PCIe Express 3.0 X4. With E5-1650v4 we don't have much to report, DDR4-2400 works, and that's it. With E5-2697v3, memory overclocking is of course not possible, but with this CPU we can do Turbo Boost Unlock. 
it is surely possible with X99 H9S and I have added support for this motherboard to my Mi 899 application. With the test results on hand, I can say that Chiyida X99 H9S is at least worth your consideration. If you're looking for a budget-friendly X99 gaming PC or a working computer and you need Windows 11 support, then Chiyida X99 H9S is probably one of the best options on AliExpress. At the same time, the motherboard is not ideal. We have the typical Chinese issues uh, such as non-working sleep mode, non-working temperature and power consumption sensors, and only one 4-pin PWM header for a smart fan. Other than that, even though the motherboard is tiny, it is just a bit bigger than a mini ITX, it has PCI Express x16, PCI Express x1, two M.2 slots, which is more than enough for most of the regular users. So, my final score for the motherboard would be 7 out of 10, but even though I have tested two different X99 H9S samples, I still need to remind you that AliExpress is a lottery, and there is absolutely no guarantee that the motherboard you buy will have the same quality, the same features, the same bias. And with the TPM 2.0 modules you also need to be very picky, very careful, because these modules are dying and I don't know if it is fault of the motherboard, which is supplying wrong voltage, or it is just crappy TPM modules that are dying themselves. With that I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and useful. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.